Jacob. I think I will turn to English to, in respect of, of the international guests here today. Um, first of all, I have to apologize for being the chief executive following the thing you've just heard, for having accepted hierarchical responsibility for, for this city. But I am sort of reassuring myself by focusing on what powers that gives me, because it gives me probably one of the strongest tools you can have in your bag, the force to make people speak together, to force people to have dialogues. And that is probably and will increasingly be my strongest tool in following the development you've heard my mayor present yesterday, and the, the sort of the core of what this conference is all about. What can you achieve when you really engage in appreciative inquiry and you work with it in a very responsible and systematic way? Inviting you all in to, to give us assistance is a very sort of complicated situation. I'll go into some deep, uh, into further d depth in it in, in a moment. But we have, and most of you appreciate this of course, in the Scandinavian countries and in Denmark in particular, a very comprehensive system of social welfare in which we believe that we have actually come as close as you can to the perfect system of taking care of people with needs. And we are now realizing that this is not the case. And even though we put more money into it, which we cannot afford, we wouldn't be able to solve it. And I think that is probably the, the wall, the brick wall that we are now sort of meeting in our endeavors. So thank you so much for helping us in finding new ways. Thank you so much for giving your competences, your energy, your passion into creating new ways in the two workshops that we are going to have this afternoon. Who is in charge of the slides? You. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, you're unable to hear what I'm saying, yeah. Okay. I haven't planned it properly. Um, thank you so much. Well, some of you have seen this uh, wonderful rainbow panorama on top of our modern art museum. In many ways, this has become the symbol of modern Aarhus. Mm. It's not just a wonderful piece of art, which it really is, but it always, always gives us this reminding that you can see the city from different angles, with different colors, and it varies tremendously over the day, whether it's thundery storms going over the city, or it's wonderful sunshine, or even rain. It's a tremendous experience to go in the rainbow panorama. And it reminds you that the world can be perceived in extremely different ways, and it has become, when it was erected a few years ago, the new symbol of what we're about to achieve. So we're extremely proud of it, uh, and I hope you will all come to, to see it and enjoy the different visions that it gives and the reflections that it, it gives as well. This picture is really a false one, because in, in everyday life, there are people up there. And you're actually part of creating the art piece yourself when you're in, in the rainbow panorama. So the number of people walking around in the, in the panorama really is the essence that you take part in creating the variety or, and new perceptions of what's going on. This is the uh, front page of our document. I think that the mayor would have presented you with it uh, yesterday, which we called Kommune Forfra. We're looking at the way we do things from new angles and trying to see in a very different way how we can engage citizens uh, in creating uh, uh, the new fundament for us. And th this picture, of course, we have been celebrated. We've, we've been celebrating uh, f f f last summer and in, 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 in a glimpse, it, it really gives you an impression of, of what it is to serve needs in a way where you accept 
that the needs of those you are going to help or assist can be very, diff very difficult and different. This policeman, of course, is not getting extra salary for sitting down playing with the kid. I think that the, the, the expression on her face really says it all. She's appreciated, she's seen, she's been accepted, and she's might, she might even get some security back uh, by finding that the policeman can actually engage with her in this, in this situation with such pa empathy and, uh, and care, basically. We've, we've, we've dared in this way for, of, of new thinking to use the word love. Some of you would say this cannot be done, but we have, we've tried to say that you have to really love the people you're with when giving social services and engaging with citizens if you want to have responses back that can actually bring us to new places. But that's an ongoing dis discussion of how we can sort of frame ourselves as professionals. But to the more serious case of what you've asked me to do. Um, the session this afternoon will be about the new refugee uh, challenge that we are facing in Aarhus. <coughs> uh, it's a new one. We haven't had, the, I'll come back to the numbers, but the challenge for us is a new one. We've, we've, um, we've over the last many years, have, have, have had, we've had a lot of immigrants, and we must say, frankly, that we have not been successful in, in making integration work. The social services that we've offered have been offered in a, in a sort of a linear way uh, in different phases, and we have not been able to engage many of our immigrants in civil society and in taking part of, of creating something that could be different from what we, came, what we had. So our history is one of relative failure. So if we're going to change things, we have to think anew. And that's why we need you. If we look at it from the city's point of view, from the sort of, from the structure of the municipality, there are needs that we ourselves will have to remedy to be able to engage with our, with our environments in a responsible and efficient manner. First of all, we have to secure that the silos actually work together. We cannot make this change without having a responsible cross-sectoral cooperation in solving these issues. And I think it goes for many professional systems at least in this city, that we have not had that tradition. We've had a politically separated system, and many of the silos will refer to, polit to different political bosses having different agendas. And if that is the only principle of governance, we will not succeed. So we have to create an organization that can actually, in real terms, go <coughs> across silos and create new solutions. So, if we take these things in the back, we, we must, when we think about what, we will, what we're going to do with refugees, have a much more holistic approach. We, have, we, we must have an action plan, a blueprint, that engages all those who are relevant, being at schools, being at social services, and healthcare, and many more things that you can actually think of. So there's a lot for us to do as an organization and the way we, we engage with our environment. So the task of, uh, of, of, of renewing our thinking of integration is at the top of our minds when we engage into these new ways of working. And we, we believe that the, the, the process of welcoming is, is a very it's, it's a vulnerable and very difficult uh, first point of entry in showing that we can actually do this in a different way. In many ways, we can see we're trying to do whatever we can to create the concepts that will enable us to do it from the very start. 
you might s s sort of, if, if we go into the, to the second half of the slide up here, to see what are the tasks and the cooperational themes. Many of them are extremely banal, but they're also basic. We have not had a sort of common view of the numbers of what is happening across the different silos. We are, we are, go we are having that now. We're working on it collaboratively across sectors. Our councillors know, and all of us who are engaged, engaged can follow what happens. We're now, as I've said many times, trying to review what we can do differently, trying to mainstream all the different uh, supporting efforts that we do across the different services that we have, schools, or being it uh, schools, education, employment, treatment, health, and the rest. And we try to do it in a way that makes it possible for NGOs, companies, and others to engage in those different uh, things. And that is much easier, easier said than done. Uh, because this effort of creating cross-sectoral collaboration is tough. It sometimes takes most of our energy. And we seem to forget or not, have, not to have energy to go further and engage NGOs and other agents. So I think the first phase, and that's probably why we don't have refugees in the room, is that we've, we've been doing so much work to, to make our own system work in a holistic way, that we have only come to see what the possible enrichment of engaging those who, who we're really talking about to invite them into a room. We are on a journey, uh, and I think we will, we will travel at a, an increasingly higher speed as time goes by. What we're going to do right now, what we're engaging you, your help to, is really to see this shift of paradigm. How can we put that into practice? And the shift of paradigm is really to look at the newcomers in a new way and not sort of taking them through steps of introduction as we have done. First the asylum period, then learn the language, then see what are your competences, and then after a long, long, long period of time, seeing where can you actually end up in our society. We'll, we're changing that totally. So the first thing that a newcomer must do is to get engaged in the society that you meet, no matter whether you can speak the language or whatever you come with. You must be part of this society with what you are and what you have. The legislation has been changed in this country that you must actually be in, in practice in a, in, in a company within four weeks. So we, you, you must have, or you will get, a positive connection to Danish everyday life nearly immediately after you've landed. And on top of that, we throw all the, all the, the other competences, training in language, training in your, in your competences, look what, what can we, how can we actually facilitate what you have from your culture or from your background into the way we develop our society. And that process has had a new framework, as many of you, of course, is very much aware of, because the sort of the clashes of cultures have been much more have been much clearer over the last years. That there are things that we can do, and there are things we will most certainly not do. There are things we are prepared to accept on a broad level, and there are things we will, under no circumstances, accept. And where the newcomers will have to change, they will have to accept the rules of the game. I, I don't know, any, any of you have read Fukuyama's, have you read Fukuyama's new book about the systems that work and the systems that do not work? He's so kind to hail our system in Denmark as one of the few systems that really can both change and can give room for, for democratic procedures. But he also says another thing which is very important to note, and that's why I, I stress this, and that is that this has not been an easy road to create a society like this. It has been 
changes over time. It has been tough encounters, tough discussions, learning by failing and learning by achieving new goals. So this is not a thing that comes just by letting things happen. It comes by insisting on rules of the game that can actually have many different views and can have many, di many different attitudes and can give freedom to personal life. But you must accept the rules of the game if you want to have a society that can actually have that why. So, that is what, we, that is what the, the, the shift of paradigm is really all about, that you will be engaged in our system, you will learn the rules of the game, and we will listen to you, what you have to contribute with, we will give you a framework to, to be the person that you want to be, but you also have to learn how it is to navigate in a system like the Danish system uh, to be able to, to fulfill your dreams. Otherwise, we will change you or force you out of the system. And we will most certainly do that because we will not do it at the expense of our own system, to put it sharply. And this is discussion that's going on in Europe in these, in these days in many different ways. And I really hope that the, the change that we, we are making now will both make it very clear that there are rules that makes this possible to have a free life, a free personal life, and on the other hand, that we must listen to what is the need and the competence and the dreams of those who take part in, in the system, being it people like us, professionals, or being it refugees and newcomers. The points here um, are the elements of the new way of working following this shift of paradigm which is being reflected in national legislation and which will be the things that we, uh, we will try to, to, to work with in, in the coming months and years. Can I ask a question about Yes. Is, are these things already in national legislation so these are non-negotiable parameters for the shift? No, these, these are ways of formulating what is the what, can, what will follow the shifts of legislation. Uh, so th these are basically our game plan, so to speak. How we as a city has translated this into our own approach. So if you go through it, um, we aim for ordinary employment. Much of it, of course, comes from the foundation of what, is what the national legislation has meant for us. But we go for ordinary employment. We, we try to work with job and language at the same time. We try to to go to have experiences of Danish society as quickly as possible, uh, preferably even in the, in the early, very early stages before we actually know whether you're going to stay or not. Um, we're going to, to do whatever we can to use the competence the best way possible and facing that some have none that is suitable to our environment and then we'll have to train it. We, we try to do a branch focus uh, meeting the supply and demand of what businesses are like at the moment. Uh, we Fortunately, we have in, in this city a very good development. Very many people move to the city and we have a large growth in tourist attractions. So many service jobs have actually come up over the last year. So many of these stories can be told on a positive note. Try to work uh, very focused on language uh, and then all the way try to see whether we can do things differently. So, to sum up, cooperation across departments and sections is a precondition for success. I think we've come a long way on that score. Um, we try to, um, uh, to, do, uh, to, to have a, a demand-driven employment policy to, see, to, to try to educate people for where the jobs are. We're really trying to see whether what we can where we can have the maximum benefit from, from new legislation and we're working with a talent program on a very short sort of short site from, from this year and into next year. Here are our numbers. To give you an idea of what we're facing, um, you probably have already had the figures for, for how many people with an undated background we have in the city. It's approximately one out of six uh, with, with a non-Danish ethnic background. Uh, and and, and the, um, the refuge numbers 
uh, have, of course, dramatically uh, gone up from 15, 16, um, where the quota is about 500 per year. And we know that they will, that will generate a family uh, immigration of double that, that figure. So we are facing about 1,000 per year with this score. Um, well, that is what we are obliged to take. And of course, th th it depends on how many will come nationally. These are the national numbers. And at the moment, we've, we've, been, we've been said to expect 17,000. That will not come. I think we'll have a, a considerably smaller number <coughs> uh, due to some of the regulations at the borders and the rest of it. Uh, you can see oh, at this time of the year we've had 117. But we know they will come in, in, the, in the autumn because summer is the, 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 the time where you can actually migrate. Uh, but it's uncertain whether we will, we will, we will have the number of, of over 600 that we've actually accepted from government. But it's still, it's still quite a lot. It's, um, with, with, the, with the families, it's about sort of one-fourth of the growth of the city per year. So, so it, it gives us quite a challenge to create all the, the facilities that will, that will take care of, of this influx. And it's on top of a relatively unsuccessful integration of those who have migrated over the years for, for other reasons. Um, these are the numbers of where, they, where, where people come from, uh, where came from in, in, in 15. Half of them from Syria, one quarter from, uh, come from countries where they had no citizenship which means uh, Palestine uh, and, and the Middle East. Um, one out of 10 from Eritrea, and then there are lots from, uh, from very many different countries um, around the world. So, to the work that you are going to face this afternoon, um, you're going to work with how to include the refugees, comp the refugees competences in the, in the labor market. That's one of them, and, and the other one is to go into health, literacy, and social networks as a pathway to integration and active citizenship. And I hope you will have this sort of, my sort of short introduction on the back of your mind when you engage in the workshops. And we're looking very much forward to your good advice and to all your passion uh, in the work this afternoon. Thank you very much.